Hey everyone, this is Rebecca E. Parsons, and today we are in the studio painting wishy-washy flowers. I hope you're going to love this wonderful acrylic painting tutorial with me. So get your brushes and paints, and let's get in the studio. Hello, hello. This is Painted Tuesday, and we are going to have some fun with what I call wishy-washy acrylic flowers. We've done some watercolor flowers a couple of times, so now we are going to dive into using some acrylics to do some flowers. And these are going to be real loose. That's my style. I hope it's going to be your style. You can get more refined if you want. But this is just about learning how acrylics work on paper. So this is how they would work on your um, sketchbooks, on your altered books, on your junk journals especially, or even Bible journaling if that's something you are into. So I like, I prefer when I'm painting with acrylics to use really long handled brushes and I just pulled a couple today. I've got a number seven flat and a number five filbert because one of the things I see a lot of times people doing and this was pounded into my head a million times while I was learning with my French masters was not to hold my brush like a pencil way down here and paint like that was if I wanted to get a real natural and loose feel was to hold your brush back by the ends rather than by the the tip with the bristles. So I've just put a few colors out here on my palette. My page and my uh, sketchbook has been coated with gesso and then some just loosely some titanium white. So we are just going to dig in here right now and paint some flowers. First of all, um, I'm going to show you how to put water on your brush. So you dip your brush in water. And I always hold, when I'm painting, some kind of cloth in my um, opposing hand. And you bring it, let me bring this close to the, and you put it against the cloth and I hope you saw how the water disappeared. I usually turn it over and do that again and that's the right amount of water in your brush to use with acrylics. Don't, you're not really supposed to just grab a dry brush and dunk it into an acrylic paint. You're supposed to load water on your brush. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is go dark. I'm going to get in here. This is like a, a dark navy or it's kind of a medium um, cobalt, I think it's called Ink Spot or Ink Something um, by Folk Art. And I'm just going to loosely put in some dark patches in the background. And I kind of paint more watercolory, I guess, with, um, with these. I'm not going to clean my brush now. I'm going to get into some of this like teal paint, and I'm just scrubbing it around. I'm not overthinking it. I just knew the colors I wanted, and I kind of go from dark to light. A lot of times I will put a red undercoat on, but it's inspired by these beautiful camellia flowers that I saw, and I will put a picture or two of those in this um, video. So you can see what I was inspired by. But these lovely camellias have a very rounded, um, their petals, they have lots of petals and they're very rounded and compacted in together initially. And then they spread out and droop over, but they are so beautiful to look at. Okay, so I'm just going to come in and not cleaning my brush again. I'm just going to come in and put a few dabs of green because there would always be green with any kind of nature. <laughs> okay, then I'm going to go ahead and clean my brush off and my cloudy water over here. And I am going to go ahead and do the same thing again to get the 
brush loaded. And I think that we kept that light enough that that dark, that background is already kind of um, dry. Some of the green is still active, but most of it's dry. So I'm just going to get into my red. <gasps> and come in here and just swirl in a couple of red shapes. Just establish where these flowers are going to be. That's all I'm going to do for now. Just get some reds in there. Going to clean my brush a little bit, not too much. I've still got some red on there and get into my yellow. And I'm going to swirl that around also. We're keeping these very loose. And if you see, if I get in here and keep putzing at it, the yellow is going to go away and it's going to combine with the red and it's going to create an orange. So that's one of the things you really need to learn when you're working with acrylics or even oils is don't over blend. Don't over get overly excited and do that kind of thing. And I do that a lot. I have a tendency to putz. So I get in here and boom, boom, boom. And the first thing you know, I've got an orange flower instead of red with yellow highlights. I'm just going to come in. As you see, I've still got some yellow and red both on this brush. And I'm just going to tap in a couple of places. And that's going to create buds in the background. Okay. And I'm going to come in and just tap a little yellow in there. And that's all I'm going to do for those buds. They are done. I'm going to consider those done. I'm going to come in and just do a little more red and yellow. Doing smaller things. I love this down here, so I'm going to leave it alone. I want to get a little more rounded shape in this one. So I'm going to do that. And... I'm going to clean my brush. And a lot of times I would probably stop right here and let this dry. Let these dry so they can, um, they won't blend with the next layer I put on. And what I want to do is just bring some dark back into the middle. So I'm going to come in here and get some of this dark color. And I'm just going to come in very, very lightly and get some dark in here. And again, same thing. You don't want to over blend because if you over blend, blend this blue with this, these yellows in here, you're going to get green in the middle of that flower. So just tap it in, plop it in, and leave it alone. Go away. Don't do any more of that. And I think we are good. I think we are good. Except we could come in and put some white highlights in there if that's what you want to do. And get it even more juicy. So we can load some of our titanium white. And just come in and get some really few flicks of the wrist. And remember these camellias are round, round, round. So we want to keep that roundness going in there. And if you do too much, if you get too much in there, you can always come back and put some of your darker colors in. I don't really want blue. I want to get my red, and I'm going to mix it with a little bit of the blue and get kind of a purple. And for me, I kind of always have purple darks or blue darks, I rarely, rarely use black in my art. Just That's just something that my teachers taught me, <laughs> my two little French guys, just not to use black unless I really want a heavy contrast and it's a really modern painting. I don't like to use blacks. So I'm just going to come in here and keep my brush very light and put a few darks in. This one I don't want to mess with too much because I am loving it. But just keep a few darks in there. And I've lost some of my red, so I'm going to come back and get into my red and bring some more in here. 
just tap it in wherever I lost or it started to get orangey and tap some of that red in. And you can see it's just about play. It's absolutely just about play. So I think we're good. I think we've got it going on. We've got some darks and some lights. In here. And we've got the roundness going, which I really love. And put just a hair of white right in there. Don't blend it too much. You don't want to get pink. You want to keep these pretty dark. So anyway, I'm going to stop before I make a mess. And you can't see these lovely camellias that I've created. I got a dab there, so I'm just going to dab in some yellow and create another bud behind that flower. Happy accidents always are good. Okay. I think we're good in there right now. Stop, Rebecca. Stop, stop, stop. Some of the, that's one thing that um, that my art teachers told me is that you have to know when to stop because, especially when painting, is that you can, in most instances, come back with just one more stroke and boom, you have lost everything you worked so hard for. So I think we're going to stop today. I hope you're inspired to do some flowers. I will probably come back in here when this dries and put some little impressions of a stem in back there. Not too much because camellias, you don't really see their stems. They kind of sit on a bush-like thing. So you'd see a lot more of the green around there. So I may come in and do some darker greens around just so I can see that today. Okay, so I hope you had fun doing these kind of wishy-washy flowers and that you will pick up some acrylics. They're fairly inexpensive and you can paint with them and have some fun. And this is something even you can share with your children or your older adults in the home. Everybody can paint these flowers. So have fun with the wishy-washy flowers. And this is Rebecca E. Parsons. And get into your contagious creativity and pass it on. May peace be with you all.